Hi, I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. Okay, today is the start of my first week of the Magical Readathon. I intend to be vlogging weekly and show you what books I'm reading and which prompts I'm checking off. So I started yesterday with Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. And this is a thriller with a time travel loop. It instantly had me gripped, which is something that I find very hit and miss with thrillers for me. But we are following from this woman's perspective and she's waiting for her just turned 18 year old son to come home and he's kind of flouting the curfew. So as she's waiting uh, for her son to come home, she sees him outside their house, but she sees him with an older man. And all of a sudden he stabs the man three times. And she runs out and tries to stem the blood flow and, you know, looks at her son, why did you do this? And he just says, I had to. And she notes that there's no remorse on his face. And so he ends up getting arrested and the parents just end up going home frazzled. And when she wakes up the next day, it's the day before. She's in a backwards time loop and she thinks that the reason she's in this time loop essentially is she must have information that can stop the murder. And if she can figure out what it is, then the time loop will be resolved. Um, it's been really good so far. In fact, I have already read a third of the book, like over 100 pages, because it was just that gripping, which is nice. It's quite refreshing for me to have a really strong intrigue in the book. Yeah, and so she's also making a lot of mistakes that seem quite realistic. Like she'll send an email and then be waiting for somebody to get back to her, but because she's traveling backwards, she hasn't actually sent that email. And those are like things that felt really realistic to me and also gave it more conflict as well. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this and I looked it up and she has quite a few other books as well. So if I enjoy this one, I have more to choose from. I am reading Wrong Place, Wrong Time for Spells and Incantations which is a book that's a certain page length. And then I also started last night The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I read the first chapter and I have to say, I, I really like the writing. This is for the class uh, Astronomy, two E's in the uh, title for the and picture. It's not a class I actually need for my career, but since I'm reading this anyway, uh, I thought I would fit it into a class. Um, so in the beginning, we're meeting this man who has painted this picture of Dorian Gray and one of his wealthy to-do friends asks if he's gonna showcase this painting. He thinks it's great and it should be put forward for like prizes and competitions, but he's like jealous of like wanting to keep it a secret. He's like, there's too much of me in this painting. It reveals too much of me. There's some really interesting homosexual subtext that just feels quite blatant to me, but I guess maybe men were more flowery back then. This was written back in 1890, so. Yeah, there was one line that I really enjoyed. Yes, she is a peacock in everything but beauty. And I was just like, loved that snark. I have also been wanting to mood read some comics and graphic novels. I feel like I haven't read very many this year. So in addition to the books that are on my TBR, I might be slotting in some graphic novels, comics, or mangas, just because that's what I'm in the mood for. I feel lucky that I picked a challenge that's only six for my career, which feels really doable to me, so I have room to mood read. I will pop in and let you know how I am enjoying the books. It is, it is day three. I have now finished Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister, and I'm giving it five stars. I was really blown away by 
how pacey it was. Uh, one of the things I really liked is that we kept finding out secrets and mysteries a little bit at a time. So it helped f like fulfill the intrigue for a longer period of time. It was just excellently paced. There were a few twists that I was able to guess based on hints. And there was some that just completely came out of nowhere and really surprised me. So I have now finished that. That is so exciting. I did want to share part of the book that, because it's a time loop, a lot of the things would be spoilery. But I wanted to share a bit that wasn't. She scrubs the kitchen countertops and stacks the dishwasher. When she wakes up yesterday, none of this will have been done. But isn't that kind of always the way housework feels? And I was like, yes, the futility of housework. I dig it. So yeah, I got my first class ticked off and that's so exciting. I loved the time travel element of the story. I loved where the characters became a lot more complex. I just, I can't say enough good things about this thriller. It was just fabulous and I'm going to definitely check out her backlog because this is one of the first thrillers I've given five stars. So I am still reading uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray but I haven't read any more. I don't have anything else to share with but I will continue working on that this week. But I'm also going to now start Remarkably Bright Creatures and that is for the class to match your outfit to the cover. Now it only says you have to match the color, but I'm a little bit extra and I have shirts that are very colorful. So the main two colors on Remarkably Bright Creatures are blue and orange, and I'm definitely wearing both blue and orange. So I will be starting that book today. I'm not going to wear this shirt for all of the days that I read this book, but I'm going to start out that way. I also wanted to mention, if you've seen my April TBR, you'll see that I've gotten a bingo. And for my reward, I picked up Axolation by Ted Chang. Um, these are science fiction and fantastical short stories. I have read them before and given them five stars. Absolutely love it, and now I own it. And with the uh, hardback, it has deckled edges, which I know not everyone's a fan of, but I love it. So I'm very excited to be adding this to my shelves. I think that's it. This is a great start to the to the week and I'm hoping the rest are just as good. So I'll update you when I've got more. So today is day four. I started Remarkably Bright Creatures on my Kindle last night and I've read about a hundred pages. So far it's going pretty well. We get a few different perspectives. One is Marcellus, the octopus. We get his perspective. Um, we also get a perspective from the elderly cleaning lady, Tova, who cleans the aquarium and forms this bond with Marcellus. And then we're also following a few other characters, and I don't know exactly how they're related or what part of the story they're, they are going to shape. Um, so it's multiple perspectives, and I really like the audiobook particularly because they have different voices for the different voice characters. And the man that voices Marcellus has a pretty deep voice, and so... For some reason, it's kind of reminding me of Marvin, the depressed robot from uh, Hitchhikers. It was voiced by um, Alan Rickman, and he has a low, deep voice. And for some reason, I, 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 th I thought about that when I was listening to Marcellus. Uh, he's a very clever octopus. He has figured out how to get out of his tank and into the 
other tanks that have food that he's interested in. We've learned a little bit about Tova. We know that her son disappeared shortly after he was 18 and it is likely he took his own life, but there was no body and no proof. I'm not sure if that's like gonna come up later or if that's just kind of part of Tova's backstory. I'm enjoying it. It's definitely not as gripping as the first book that I read, but that makes sense. I also have read one more chapter of The Picture of Dorian Gray. I'm going very slowly while reading this, so it's, it might not get done this week. Not only is it more character and words rather than like actual plot, plus there are a ton of endnotes and footnotes that offer additional uh, context, which is nice, but it makes for a much slower reading experience. However, I did note in uh, in chapter two, Dorian is, I knew he wasn't going to be a likable character, but uh, he, he says, your picture has taught me that Lord Henry Wotton is perfectly right. Youth is the only thing worth having. When I find that I am growing old, I shall kill myself. And I was just like, that's kind of a drama king thing to say. Like... <laughs> very dramatic. He's so enamored with how he looks in the portrait and he despairs the fact that he will never look that good again and looks are gonna go away. And he's just obsessed with it. That's what's happening so far. Part of me is not sure if I want to keep going with this. I, I feel like two chapters is not enough to actually judge it on. Let's see. That's, yeah, only 34 pages. But We'll just see. I'm reading it at a slower pace, but I may drop it if it doesn't start getting more intriguing for me. That's my update on both of those. I intend to read a little bit more. I will... I'll update you more when I have it. Hey, so today is day seven. I had some really poor health days uh, for the last couple of days, and so I am gonna try to salvage this vlog. I'm a spoonie, and I just, I didn't have the energy to vlog, unfortunately. I've decided to add a little spoon meter so that you can see how much health I have, or how much energy I have, I should say. So, while I wasn't filming, I did read. So, Last time I checked, I had told you a little bit about Remarkably Bright Creatures. I have now finished that. I'm giving it four stars. The characters were definitely the shining star of this book. I loved Tova, the elderly woman, with her connection to Marcellus, the octopus. And I didn't like Cameron's perspective at first. He's He's quite immature and he blames kind of everybody but himself when things go wrong. So his character was frustrating to read, but he does grow and he, I did become more attached to him by the end. I will say at times it felt like the author was trying to be emotionally manipulative and that's usually a really big turnoff for me. I do not like when I can tell. However, I felt like she was mostly successful with it because I really did grow to care about the characters. One other downside is that there are way too many coincidences. It, it's unbelievable how many coincidences there are, which kind of pulled me out of the story as well. However, I, I had a really fun time reading it. I feel like this was a wholesome story about connections and friends and family, and I really enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't have thought that that would have worked for me, but I didn't, I didn't actually mind it. It was just a fun escape from my reality. So I ended up giving that four stars. Then last night, completely apropos to nothing, I decided to start reading Viola Davis's memoir, Finding Me. I heard that this had recently won an audiobook award and so I wanted to listen to the audiobook, which she narrates herself. She grew up in a really um, poor and violent household. There were all sorts of traumas and rodents infested the house and the house has caught fire because of faulty wiring or people messing around doing unsafe stuff. And yeah, like 
she's instantly hooked me. I think she's a great narrator and I was really enjoying hearing from her perspective. However, this doesn't fit any of the magical readathon prompts. There was one where it's like flip a coin heads is nonfiction, tails is fiction. And I was gonna try it for that one, but I got fiction, so yeah. This is just a, a random mood read that I've decided to insert. Obviously, I'm not gonna finish it today, so it is gonna kind of roll over into vlog week two. If you're participating in the magical readathon, how did your first week go? Is anybody <laughs> is anybody not sticking to their list really well? Um, let me know. So in this vlog, I completed two of the tasks, which I'm really happy with. Um, I only have six total that I have to do, so that's still ahead of schedule. I finished Remarkably Bright Creatures, which was the art of illusion for matching the colors to my outfit. And I finished Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which was for the spells and incantations to read a specific page length. So I'm ecstatic. Like, I had a four and a five, and I... I'm reading a book I'm really enjoying as well. I have decided to officially DNF the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, it's, I'm not in the right headspace for it, so it's going to be a soft DNF. I expect I'll pick it up at some point in the future. But yeah, it's just, it's not vibing with me right now. Okay, let me know how your magical readathon or just your April is going. Let's have a chat down in the comments below. Thank you for joining. Bye.